can hear you. Yeah. Success, Aaron. Yeah. Can, can you hear right. me, Aaron? Yeah, I can hear you. Is there any echo on your end? No, that's pretty damn good. Thank no you. Echo. Okay. Brian, can you tell yes, me if you can, can you also hear the drilling in the background? Yes, I can. Thank you. That's very nice, isn't it? How loud is that? Uh, it's not, I mean, it's, it's, it's not unmanageable. Okay. Well, that's one thing. We're, we're up and working. I always said the red one was Earth. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of the Licensing Committee. Uh, my name is Councillor Anna Bradnam, and I'm Chair of the Licensing Committee. I apologise for the delay. We are now starting at uh, 23 minutes past two due to a technical fault. So I apologise for the delay to everybody here in the room and also to those online. Um, so... Whether present in the chamber or virtually, please make sure that you do not switch on your microphone unless you're invited to speak. Those who are participating virtually should, if possible, use a headset microphone. Please would those who are attending virtually indicate a wish to speak by use of the chat uh, box. Those present in the council chamber, do please indicate your wish to speak by raising your hand. I'll ask... Um, uh, Aaron Clark to keep a note of speakers virtually. Please wear a face covering when in the building and in the chamber except when sitting at your table to minimize the risk both to you and others. Do make use of the hand sanitizer. This meeting is being webcast live finally, thank you everybody, and a recording will be available after the meeting. By being present or contributing to the meeting, participants agree to their images and voices being broadcast and used for training purposes. Attendees may also make their own audio and video recordings so long as they do not interfere with the meeting. By the way, please turn off mobile phones 
uh, and other alarms set them to silent. If any member needs to leave, please could they make this known so it can be recorded. We have officers, uh, Rachel Jackson, the principal licensing officer, John Hall, the commercial and licensing service manager will be present uh, and at the meeting. And we also have lead member, uh, Councillor Brian Milnes, uh, who is the lead member for environmental services and licensing. Thank you, Councillor Milnes. Can I also welcome the sound of drilling? Uh, I apologise if that's distracting, but please do bear with us. We have to have the doors open for reasons of ventilation. So uh, thank you for that. So, first item on the agenda then, apologies for absence. Um, can I ask democratic services if there, there have been a number actually of apologies for absence, so. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, we've received apologies for absence from Councillor Gavin Clayton, Councillor Joe Hales, Councillor Alex Mallion, Councillor Peter MacDonald and Councillor Deborah Roberts. Thank well. you very much. Uh, Confirm um, the meeting's quorum uh, as yes. well. The quorum for this meeting is four members, so I can confirm that the meeting is quorum. Um, can I just ask the members online, can you hear us speaking as I am now when the drilling is going on? Yes, it's a distraction, but not insurmountable. Thank you. So we won't need to stop. Thank you very much, Councillor Milnes. Right. Um, declarations of intent. I in intent. <laughs> Declarations of interest. <laughs> Item two on the agenda. Uh, do any committee members have any interests that they would like to declare in relation to the items on this agenda? I see no hands. Thank you. So there are no declarations of interest. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting, item three, which is on pages one and two of our agenda. Are members happy to approve the minutes? of the meeting that was held on the 8th of February 2021, or are there any matters of accuracy that members would like to raise? I see no hands in the room. Fine, okay, so I think, sorry? Councillor Handley, you're abstaining. I will please. abstain because I wasn't present at the meeting. Thank you very much. And Councillor Whelan, probably for the I'll, same I'll reason. I'll abstain for exactly the same okay. reason. Thank you. Thank you very much. Agenda item four is uh, the Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Policy Review. It's been customary uh, for members of, sorry, what I should say is this is laid in front of us, this is how the agenda uh, was received, but it has been customary for members of the licensing committee to be involved in policy refuse, reviews prior to the reporting stage. As such, today, I propose that only those amendments which are pressing and need decision today shall be taken. The other matters will be deferred to a further licensing committee in November to enable members to partake in a workshop or other communication to discuss the proposed amendments. So today, members will be asked to consider amendments uh, under the following sections in the policy provided in Appendix A, and they will be, we'll deal with them in more detail, but they will be item six, uh, which is on page eight in our agenda, which is the fixing of license plates, paragraphs 3.6e and k. Item seven, which is the matter of CCTV, which is paragraph 3.1 naught, also on page eight, and item 10 on our agenda, which is the right to work evidence uh, on page 11 of our agenda. And I propose that we defer the other items for discussion prior to them being brought to a, a further meeting of this committee. So members, I just need to take a vote to, to postpone those items. Um, if agreed, the items referred to shall be decided upon today and the remaining items will be brought back to a future meeting of the licensing committee after the relevant workshops have been completed. So can I just ask for a show of hands, members, if you're happy that we postpone those, the major items on the agenda. Is that okay? Thank you. 
So that's unanimous. Thank you so much. So that's everybody in the room. And I would now like to invite, I apologize for not um, introducing you earlier, but first of all, Rachel Jackson, would you like to introduce yourself uh, before you introduce your report, which I understand is to give clarity as to the three recommendations that we're seeking a decision upon today. Rachel, do go ahead. Good afternoon, and thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Committee. Just say, I've been at uh, South Cams for six months tomorrow, so obviously a lot to take onto account. So you'll be seeing me a lot more often, obviously, hopefully more in person at the next kind of meetings. But as I say, today's just a couple of issues we need to discuss. Obviously, the second item on the agenda being the Gambling Act policy. But myself and John obviously will work through all the different policies and improvements we need to make to the service to make things run even better and more efficiently. So Jackson, thank you, you Chairman. Like would you like to put, thank you so much. Would you like to put your camera on so that we can actually see? I, Are you? Just bear with, yeah, I will indeed. Just bear with me one second. I've had a lot of technical hitches myself, and I didn't want to tempt fate, to be honest oh, with okay. you. Oh, okay. If you if you'd probably I will, just do it verbally, no that's fine. I will, I will. I will try. And oh, there we are. We've got you. There we go. Lovely. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> hello, everybody, and nice to meet you, albeit virtually. Thank you. Okay, so do go ahead with your report, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. The committee is asked to consider proposed changes to the policy for either statutory reasons or as a result of the effects of the pandemic and an opportunity to bring efficiency to both the licensed trade and the licensing authority. The first proposed amendment at section six in the annex relating to the fixing of plates Whilst this isn't necessarily urgent and pressing, I feel it is quite important that if members can reach a decision today, it would be beneficial for the organisation. As you'll see from the rationale, this will allow officers to explore more cost-effective and more sustainable solutions to plates. One option is to switch to an adhesive variant of the plate, which avoids the need for brackets being bolted onto vehicles. Agreeing this proposal will allow officers to undertake a procurement exercise to enable alternatives to be considered. With regard to section item seven, the proposed CCTV amendment, I wish to make additional comment, if I may, as this matter has, of course, been subject to numerous reports previously to this committee. In October 2017, the licensing committee approved a draft policy of consultation that required all licensed vehicles to be fitted with CCTV. Following various reports and committees, it was later agreed that all licensed vehicles would be required to have CCTV installed by no later than the 31st of March, 2021. As this date has now passed and CCTV has not been installed into vehicles due to the recent ongoing effects of the pandemic upon staff resources, capacity and the trade, this policy must now be reviewed to allow for a possible extension to this mandatory requirement. In addition, I'd like to note that in July, 2020, the Department for Transport or DFT uh, statutory taxi and private hire vehicle standards were published. These included new and additional guidance relating to CCTV. In particular, it stated that the government is fully supportive of the use of overt surveillance cameras in a public space, such as taxi and private hire vehicles, whenever that use is, in pursuit of a legitimate aim, necessary to meet a pressing need, proportionate, effective and compliant with any relevant legal obligations. The guidance also stated that the information commissioner's view on this matter is that in most cases, a requirement for continuous operation is unlikely to be fair and lawful in processing of personal data. The imposition of a blanket requirement to attach CCTV as a condition to a license is likely to give rise to concerns about the proportionality of such approach and will therefore require an appropriately strong justification and must be kept under regular review. It holds on this basis, subject to your possible extension committee today, that the licensing team, in liaison with legal services, wish to review the policy to ensure that it remains robust and meets the most recent guidance in light of existing evidence and local intelligence. And clearly, this will be quite a big discussion, I'm imagining, on our um, any future reviews as well, with regard to the workshops, etc. But we're looking at the, the date and the time implications today. Um, finally, the revision at section 10 relates to the rights work evidence, and this is a mandatory change, so it's really not perhaps a matter with respect for your committee, more to note this afternoon. But if there are no questions, Chairman, thank you. That concludes my introduction. Thank you very much, uh, Ms Jackson. 
so these are the three items that we're looking at. Um, can I just ask before we go any into any debate, um, let's let's take them one by one to start with. So this is the first one is item six, um, item six in appendix A, the fixing of license plates. Uh, which refers back to paragraphs 3.6e and k in the policy. Um, and the rationale that Ms. Jackson has given us is that uh, a greener and more cost-effective plates could be obtained, which would fix directly to the bodywork of the vehicle, removing the need for brackets. So um, my view is that that is not an unreasonable thing to request. Councillor Hunt. Oh, thank you, Chair. I just wondered if we could have a little bit of clarification. Um, does this mean that the that we as an authority could explore different options for fixing, or does it mean that individual drivers or taxi companies can choose something of their own? No, it would be that we specify an alternative. Ms. Jackson, would you like to explain that again? Thank you, Chairman. Yes, thank you, Councillor. Just for clarity, we would identify an alternative solution that is more cost effective, more importantly, less more sustainable, less impact on landfill than we currently have. So, but all drivers would be, we basically we produce the plates of the licensing team, and then obviously the policy would dictate how that driver must display their plates on the vehicle and the, the shape and format, et cetera, of the plates that are issued. So there is no kind of option for the driver. They know exactly where the vehicle signage and plates must be installed. They haven't, unfortunately, got a choice in that matter. Um, and Ms. Jackson, um, you helpfully elucidated the sort of difference between what we, the kind of brackets we have now and what you were proposing for the future. Would you just like to describe uh, what you had in mind? Of course, we actually, there's two options available. One which would look very similar to the longer plate we, we currently have for the private hire. It would look exactly the same, same size format, um, and that would just stick without a need for bracket. An adhesive vinyl goes onto the vehicle, is removed, it's tried and tested without any damage to the bodywork, and it's not something that they can remove because obviously the adhesive will certainly wear off after time. Um, but as I say, it's been a very secure measure. It's certainly been used at the authority I was previously working at for about six years and other authorities around the country. And I, I'm sure pretty much around not in Hans, but some other areas around here as well, other neighbouring authorities have used it too, but it's an adhesive plate, which I say is equally as effective and, inf and for enforcement has actually been um, a more robust system than brackets, which we haven't observed as officers being fixed to the bodywork and it might have been putting the rear window, for example. So there's no scope to do that, quite frankly. The, the plate will, must be affixed securely to the bodywork. Okay, so um, I also have a question, but Councillor Howell, would you like to ask your question? Thank you, Chairman. Um, so, when this um, plate fixes to the car, when it's removed, does it, well, do you think it'll cause any damage to the car that will affect its retail value when it, the car's um, sold? That would be my major concern. My understanding is it won't, but can, uh, Ms. Jackson. Thank you. Actually, quite to the contrary, it will cause less damage than you think of bolting on to the bodywork of a, a, a bracket that currently happens. So, the answer is no. The vehicle, the Provided there has been no official resprays have been done, for example, so someone's not just got a cheap kit from Holford's and, and done some bad paint with themselves, but we, in that case, we wouldn't have the vehicle license of our high standards. So any bodywork would be repels any kind of damage, basically, quite frankly. It's been the, the plate, so I might be very articulate here, I do apologise. The plate will affix to the vehicle and be removed at the end of its term, i.e. in the 12 months period, and then can be replaced by another sticker on top of that. Uh, that was the where, point yeah. I was going to ask. What do we, uh, obviously new vehicles would be required to have the new plate. Yes. But what would we do about vehicles that currently have their existing plates? Would we wait until renewal to ask them to change? Absolutely, yeah. Resource-wise as well, Chair, it's, it's probably not, it's not a pragmatic approach. We can have a two system running, but obviously that would be coupled with, subject to your agreement, of course, and member involvement and obviously what we have decided upon. Obviously, that would be subject to a publicity campaign as well, so people are aware there are two plates. But on the basis of it, for, for people who are not as au fait with, with taxi licensing, i.e. the general public, they will see a plate which looks identical 
apart from the, the actual thickness. So, I can't see any other question. Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, Councillor Harvey, do apologise. Yes, um, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to understand, will the replacement adhesive plate be the same size or bigger or smaller than the existing one? Thank you, Councillor. If I may, yes, it, but the proposal is, I mean, we've got various options at the minute, which I'm happy to run through with the committee, but at this stage, we have got options to produce a smaller plate, which you might have seen, say, on the back of the London taxis, which is a rectangular, um, that size of shape. But at this stage, probably to avoid much change and confusion, we might opt for the longer plate, as you currently see, but just in a, a vinyl form rather than a rigid back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I don't see, I'm not hearing any objections to that. So, uh, th that sounds reasonable. Um, can I just ask if, if members, this is not a vote at this point, but can I just, you're minded to accept that at the moment? Great. Because I'm thinking we'll vote these all together at the end, um, unless anything comes up that we looks contentious. So the second item then is uh, CCTV. And you'll remember, members, there has been it took us a long time to have this discussed, to consider the implications, why we wanted it done, and members voted for CCTV to be introduced into our taxis for the safety both of the public and uh, many of us felt for the safety and, and protection of the driver as well. Um, and so we were very pleased to get this um, adopted as part of our policy uh, and I believe we did that in February 2020. Um, however, the, with this new guidance, we, we uh, need to consider that proportionality. Now, what is being proposed is, uh, forgive me, what is being proposed? It's, we did, we haven't, we've gone past the um, date where we'd intended to bring it in, in March 2021. And do we have, Miss Jackson, did you have an alternative date by which you proposed we should, it should be brought in? I, I would think being realistic and pragmatic about working with um, City and looking at, you know, picking up the procurement again of the CCTV chair, I would think 18 to 24 months. However, we need to keep this under review. So I'd be quite happy to either take a, uh, so we could either have a, consideration now that by 2023, for example, all licensed vehicles must have CCTV installed. Of course, I'd be coming back to your committee as well with the proportionality aspect. Um, at this stage, what is key for, for officers is to make sure we have a, a date in our policy, which it hasn't passed. Yes. So we aren't. So it, it's that's more the critical part. And obviously we could refer back to your committee at any given opportunity to look at the proportionality aspect and then actually any kind of technical issues or impacts we have got because that that's probably more for officer level to be quite honest to look at yeah. the whys and wherefores how we can get the CCTV installed what steps we need to take for that whereas I think for the policy formulation having an indicative indicative date of um, March December 2023 for example would allow us that time to get all the processes in place and for you to have uh, considered all the angles about proportionality as well. Can I just check with you? Um, I'm glad that you suggested March, not December, because anything that's supposed to take effect on the 31st of December of any year seems to me a nightmare for taxi drivers because, of course, they're very busy around that time of year. Um, so are we talking about effectively the end of the financial year, 31st of March, or...? Yes, the 31st of March. Yeah, I, I would. I always like to play on the, the of the financial the financial financial year rather than calendar year. So the 31st of March. Okay, so we're talking about changing the date for this. So in the current policy, uh, we're talking about um, paragraph three ten. And the date proposed was no later than 31st of March 2021. So we are, this is in 
paragraph 310C, and we're simply proposing to change that to no later than, and by the way, I emphasize the no later than, because we would like to bring it in sooner than that if it was possible, but we're proposing to bring it in no later than 31st of March 2023. Do members agree with that? Does anybody have any comment? Oh, Councillor Hunt. Thank you, Chair. I was taking note of the comments from Panther about they think that still no suitable device has been identified yes. which does this. I'm just concerned that we could pick another date. Um, do we have confidence that devices will be available then? Is it? Is it My understanding, um, and perhaps uh, Miss Jackson could clarify on this. My understanding is that there are other, uh, there are other local authorities who do have CCTV currently, and so I'm seeking that we should. Uh, call upon those other authorities and uh, share best practice from them so that we have devices that are suitable. Um, and since I've been advised that there are other, or th other authorities who are using CCTV, it seems possible we could be able to bring it in sooner. Did anybody else? Get so, Councillor Howell. Okay, Councillor Howell. Oh, Councillor Bhattacharya. Councillor Dr. Bhattacharya, do go ahead. Yeah, no. Um, Would you like to take your mask off while you're speaking okay. to the microphone? Okay, thank you, Chair. Like March 2023, it seems it seems too long and too late for the um, for the purpose of the safety and security. Why not? Why not March 2022? As I said, in we're simply setting a backstop so that we don't need to change the policy more frequently than possible. But as I said, and I emphasized, no later than. In other words, we could bring it in earlier than that if we had the wherewithal to do so. Okay, okay. And Councillor Whelan. Thank you, Chair. Um, could we set a date for this to come back to us to yes. review it sooner? But also to have, if we're having a workshop, could we have some more information on the CCTV options that are available that other people are using. I have to admit, it's not something I know very yes. much about, and I'd my, like to know more. Yes, my view is that, given that we've agreed to have a workshop, many of these things that will be pending will be discussed at that workshop as well as the things that we're deferring to it. Uh, and Councillor Harvey, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not sure um, how this will be... Um, announced, but um, I'm quite keen that when it's announced, it's, it's kind of, uh, sort of made clear that um, this was the first opportunity to review it, because I, I think it would be dangerous to sort of um, create a, a kind of situation where we, we don't enforce our previous decisions without kind of good reason. And I suppose the pandemic I think combined with um, the frequency yes. of our meetings is, is, is a good explanation for that. Certainly the the, the, the fact that we have not locally, we as an authority, have not locally identified any suitable hardware to do this, you know, the onus is on us as an authority. And until we do that, nobody can take it up. So, um, absolutely, my feeling is that we set the date as a, an ideal date, but to do it sooner than that, if we possibly can, and we charge our off our officers with the responsibility to go away and find the suitable hardware that we can then recommend to the, um, as it were, the service users, the, the hackney carriage and the private hire trade. Thank you, Councillor Howell. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, um, uh, I believe this first was passed in 2018 that we would be doing this, and then the last occasion when you just referred to was in 2022. Um, uh, I think we've had... 2022? Oh, sorry, 2020, sorry. 2020, my apologies. Um, what about, I think we've done enough of this. I think we've just got to get on with it now. I, I can't vote for 2023. We've been beating around the bush and not actually made a decision. We made a decision, I think, as much as we possibly can. If we had to wait six months, I'm fine with that because of COVID and one thing or another. I've got no problems with that at the end of this year. Uh, not the 31st of December, no, no. Yeah. but I can't accept the fact that we're going to go on to 2023. I'm sorry. Thank you, Councillor Howell. Um, the reason we are looking at this today is because the date 
that we had intended this to be brought in has already passed. So we clearly need to put a realistic date into the policy. Um, we do not want to be in the situation where we have a date in the policy which we then ignore, which we would have to if we did it by 31st of December 2021, because we have not as yet, as an authority, identified suitable hardware. So my feeling is it's reasonable to put this in at a, a long date, but as I say, including the wording no later than, so that then, when, if I, hardware is identified earlier, we can bring it in sooner than that. I'm very happy that we, we address this as soon as we possibly can, and I think partly that will come through, we'll have the workshop, we'll consider what's available, and I'm, I think also, bear in mind that during this time, the pandemic, a lot of our offices were very much engaged with other, other business and sometimes even actively redeployed into other areas, so they haven't had much time to look at this. So I absolutely agree. Ideally, we would have done it sooner, um, but I, I don't want us to have a date that we think it's unlikely we're going to be able to comply with in our policy. Um, I would like us to be able to work to a date as soon as possible, and I absolutely sympathize with what you're saying, but um, I think if we put December uh, in, we would, we would miss that one too, and I don't want to be in that situation. Um, Chairman, if you don't mind, I'll come back on that. I, I can't accept 2023, but I will go for 2022, um, and I think that will be more than enough and adequate time since we've been discussing this. Not this particular officer who I take on board is going to come six months tomorrow, um, but um, we have been. This has been kicked around since nine, uh, 2018 when we first agreed uh, in one shape or another. So I think 2022 would be more than enough time. I hear your points. Okay, Councillor Handley. I agree with Councillor Howell. We have been kicking this around since I was the lead member for environmental services and licensing. I agree that the, uh, the COVID pandemic has um, entirely messed up the plans. I, I know that. We've lost probably 18 months. Um, but 2023, there's a great risk, I think, setting it at 2023 means that that's when it will come, come about. Um, saying it will be 2023 or earlier if we can, I just think is too wishy-washy. I think we need to set it at 2022 and go for it. Okay. Councillor Milnes, I believe you would like to take part, make a contribution? Yeah, so um, I, th I think um, in Rachel's summary, um, she made reference to the changing legis legislative environment, including... Uh, the requirement to have uh, proven uh, a proportional uh, requirement for uh, this to be taken into uh, account. And my concern with trying to bring this forward, although I absolutely share the committee's uh, resolve and uh, desire to make this happen as soon as possible, we have to have a response that is uh, compliant with that new legislative requirement. Um, I think Rachel can confirm that what I, I, I've accurately dis described that. Uh, and therefore, the previous um, uh, resolution that expired on uh, at the end of March this year is effectively no longer valid and we have to go through another process. So I'd just be uh, urge caution in trying to set a deadline that actually isn't uh, achievable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Milnes. Um, um, Councillor Cohn. Thanks very much, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to agree with uh, Councillor Handley and, and Councillor Howe. I do accept the points that Councillor Milnes has uh, made about realistic timescales, but I, I do think 2022 is realistic and I think that the danger of um, going that extra year is that we just sort of kick this into the long grass and never really achieve what this committee set out to do um, and we, we, you know, we talked about this at length and there was a huge amount of concern from this committee around uh, safety of not only passengers but drivers. Um, which was the reason we, you know, adopted this this policy. 
and I do think it's important that it gets implemented sooner rather than, than later. And I think um, if other councils are already using um, similar um, systems to this, you know, it should be doable that this council can uh, achieve that in the next year. Thanks okay. very much. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Ms. Jackson, could you just come back on the point? Um, could you just clarify for me whether that my understanding was correct that other authorities are using CCTV? Absolutely, Chair. Thank you. I mean, many of our forests have been using CCTV for many, many years, well before the DFT guidance development, well before 2018, when it was constant, uh, raised as an issue in our district, Chair. So we have the likes of Rotherham, for example, who mandated it. I believe Peterborough were mandating it, then ceased. Um, but there's been very, very many councils have required CCTV. And obviously, this is part of the process we'll go through now. But I just wanted to, one of the reasons why I did suggest, Chair, if I may, the 18 month period was actually to look at the actual logistics of the installation of around 800 vehicles. If I had 25 vehicles, I'd say, absolutely, absolutely agree with you, councillors. This should have been done and we should have the 25 vehicles. But when we're looking at about 800 drivers and eight, so about 1,000 drivers, about 800 or so vehicles, in fact, maybe even a few more, then it is a huge implication. And a, and at a time where I'm in the process of actually reviewing our testing garages as well, our compliance tests at garages, who will obviously be responsible for ensuring the, the camera equipment is actually present in the vehicle when they come to, say, renew their plate as well. So there's a lot of work. While I fully appreciate the concern that we feel like we're dragging this process, I can just give you the assurance today that if, of course, we're in a position of the authority to have, I can have confidence that our testing stations are at a level where they can have the capacity and ability to uh, undertake the, the CCTV checking, and we have the system in place. Getting a system idea shouldn't be that difficult, but having a spec if we have a specification, for example, available, then that won't take time. But as I say, for me, it's actually delivering it and implementing these changes, which is a big risk for, for a, an, a service which, as you know, unfortunately has gone through a huge amount of change over the last 12 months. And I'd be very, very hesitant as a, as a professional officer to say, I can meet that chair because I don't think I can guarantee. And this is to give me some cushion and then to come back and to satisfy you as members that actually the licensing authority is able to enforce this policy correctly and effectively. This is my concern. So we're talking about an additional maximum of six months from what is proposed from the, here, the members' concerns today. Um, I, the, the safe and sensible pragmatic option, considering the level of work that needs to resume again, we are working with city as well. So as you know, sometimes two heads are better than one. Sometimes that can cause other delays as well. Um, it's just to resurrect that because I say there is a lot of work that has to be required for the licensing service to actually get us to that position where we can actively enforce and introduce a system. So it's not just a matter of picking up a system that, say, Rotherham are using, for example, and taking that on board. We've got a lot more work to prepare for that. But as you say, quite rightly, your committee, as soon as we are ready, there's, there's no benefit for me delaying this at all. There's no benefit for the organisation, for the authority to delay the installation. It is just we need to be prepared and do the job effectively. And say I'm very concerned that previously we have not addressed the proportionality aspect and a legitimate aim and pressing need. This, these three matters, obviously the whole intention of why you had CCTV and why you're so supportive of it was without obviously full merit to that exactly. Everyone can appreciate the merits of that. However, we are tied by the legislation as well, which is something that members have not had chance to discuss properly. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Jackson. Thank you. So what I think we need to do is to come up with a form of words that indicates to the, the, the um, trade that we want this done as soon as possible. Um, it also requires of us as an authority that we give them the spec of what we want them to install. But we don't want the situation where the, the drivers and the operators wait until the 
before date, before they install, if, we, if we've given them a specification. So I'm just wondering if we can come up with a form of words that gives that um, impetus, but allows the, the flexibility. Councillor Hunt, uh, sorry, hang on, uh, just let me check. Oh, sorry, Councillor Wilson. One side, sorry. Yes. Um, I, I just had two points. My first one is that um, we're, we're talking about the delay caused by COVID, but we still don't know how the recovery will take place um, because the, the, a lot of the, the um, private hire drivers have taken a big financial hit and it's, it's how, how soon we can require them to um, go to this expense. Also, um, when we're looking at other authorities who are using these CCTVs, are those CCTV um, machines doing the same thing that we were expecting to have, and that is that um, the, the, um, the film was only accessible by the licensing authority or the police, that um, people could control whether the, there was sound or not, and, um, and that they were only looking inside the cab. Mm. So it's whether the specification will, will meet what we were expecting. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Harvey. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, well, yes, I, I um, agree with the oh, um, councillors Howell and, and Hanley in that we need to get on with this, but um, same token, um, I, I, I take sort of risk setting ourselves up for another kind of non-implementation. So I think um, the chair's suggestion of emphasizing no later than would, would be the right way to go from my point of view. But also, just to get an idea of um, the complexity that might lay ahead, um, I, I wonder if, Rachel Jackson, you could talk around this proportionality issue, which I, I don't really understand what that is and what needs to be decided. Ms. Jackson, do, do go ahead. Thank you, Chair. I mean, obviously, it is... It's the, it's the imposition, not the imposition of a requirement that if you wish you can have CCTV installed, if you comply with X, Y, and Z. It's the whole proportionality of is it reasonable, practicable, proportionate? The, pre, the legislation refers to kind of the, the pressing need. So you could look at that and think how many, it sounds horrible now to say this, but how many say sexual offences, sexual attacks, or allegations have taken place in licensed vehicles between. Uh, 2010 and 2020, for example, it's looking at the history of the allegations and the it's no, so it's not just about prevention because, of course, CCTV would prevent somebody from doing something wrong. We know we know the merits of CCTV, but we also have to look, and this is why I want to explore this more closely and in depth with legal services as well to have their input about what is proportionate, because obviously we can look at uh, nationwide. Yes, of course, there's merit in having CCTV as blanket. It's all about uh, protection of the uh, protection of the passengers. However, we also need to look at the local proportionality as well. So, if it's right for one area, for example, is it also right for for, for our district? Okay. So I say there's a lot of information, but that will of course form part of our discussions, our workshops. So we can yes. we can talk about that now. We've, now we know that's the approach you wish to take, Chair. So we'll discuss it when they have got that evidence, which isn't going to be, you know. Uh, 18, 18 months minus a day. I'm, I'm not one of these people. So it will be, we'll have the workshops Sorry. to discuss. So this is a huge issue about CCTV. So we need to look at all this before it comes back to your committee as well. But also, my understanding of the proportionality is it's a balance between what are the harms that we have experienced in this district uh, that might have been resolved had there been CCTV, in other words, are there lots or not very many at all, or indeed none, versus the cost to drivers and operators who are um, certainly the evidence given by uh, Mr. Paul Clare in our appendix uh, from Panther was that their takings have been 25% of their normal takings from the beginning of March 2020, uh, between 25% and 50%, and they are now back to still only 65% of their previous takings, and many of the drivers have 
left the trade for less lucrative but um, more reliable employment. Now, I'm not saying that finance is uh, uh, the only decider in this, and I'm, that's absolutely not what I'm saying. It's just a proportionality balance, and I don't know if that helps um, Councillor Harvey. What is reasonable, I think, um, bearing in mind, certainly some of us who sit on panel hearings will have often wished, and in, this is the um, justification that we rehearsed during the long and previous discussions, that often it would have been extremely useful to have CCTV imagery of the interior of the vehicle in making our dis deliberations about appeals, about uh, licenses having been refused. So having a, you know, an independent witness would have been very useful. So we have some more speakers. I, can I suggest that in view of the time, I'm not going to take any more speakers after um, these. I have the following. Um, Councillor Hunt, Councillor Howell, Councillor Milnes, and Councillor Dr. Bhattacharya. And I think I'll call a halt there unless there's any real opening up. So, uh, and then we'll come to a decision. So, Councillor Hunt. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I think that the Principal um, Officer uh, for Licensing made something of the point I was going to make about the 800 vehicles. Um, if we set a six month deadline from now, March 2022, even if we could have the system available to buy next week, I think you'd, yes. wouldn't, you wouldn't have 800 vehicles fitted out. There'll be, a, there'll, be, there'll be a restricted number of people qualified to fit them. So I think that's out of the question. And I think the fact that we don't have, uh, haven't identified an actual piece of equipment that fulfills the specification, all right, other authorities are doing CTPE, but have they got exactly the same requirements as Councillor Wilson suggested? Possibly not. We may need to rewrite the spec when we've identified something that's quite close to it. We'll probably revisit this. None of that's happening in six months, in my opinion. So what I think we should do, and I don't know if we can, but if I was planning a project like this, I would set a deadline by which we identify the equipment, the actual equipment or units of equipment that are acceptable, and have a deadline for that, and then say, and we can make that, you know, no later than, as you wish, Chair, and then say operators will be required to implement it within six months of it being identified. I think that I, solves I think a lot of the problems. I hear what you say. I think even so, six months would be too quick for the or, delivery. Or some, some number of months, yes. 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 Um, yes. Uh, I think we do not want to hoist ourselves on our own petard by actually setting a, a deadline for us to identify equipment to, that's also too quick. I hear what you say. Um, so I am minded to simply charge the local authority, our licensing department, with identifying such equipment at the earliest possible date, making sure it meets the specification that we identified in our earlier policy, and, and then making sure that that's informed to the, the, the licensed, uh, the, the private hire and hackney carriage trade, so that they know that they've got to do it by, because they get regular newsletters, uh, but then make the final deadline the 31st of March 2023. Would you, do, do, would we have a, a reasonable support for that? I, I, I understand Councillor Howell doesn't want to do that. Okay. Um, we have got some other uh, speakers. Yes, Councillor Howell, then Councillor Milnes, then Councillor Bhattacharya. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, I would like to propose that the CCTV policy is implemented by the 1st of September 2022, which is exactly one year's time. I have not heard anything this evening, which I have this afternoon, which I haven't already heard back in uh, the years gone by. Um, everything seems to be exactly the same. We keep on seem to be waiting for government guidance. We keep on seem to be waiting for the appropriate CCTV, and yet there are others already gone forward to this. In the end, we're talking about people's safety, we're talking about passenger safety, we're talking about taxi driver safety. I believe the 1st of September 2022 is an acceptable date to get this up and going. I hope I get a second. Okay, you've made a proposal for that. Um... So that would be for the installation or for the identification? 
insulation. Okay. And do you have a second to Councillor Cohn? Did you say? Um, interestingly, we don't actually have a proposal on the table for the, word, the form of words that we would have used. Um, so let's just take that proposal at the moment. So Councillor Howell's proposal is that we have equipment, the wording to be confirmed. Do you want to give Chairman, us a wording? Yeah, I'm not going to bind everybody up with word in and different no, things like exactly. that. We all know what we're talking about here. We all know that... You want installation on. by 1st 20, of September 1st of September 2022. So years' time. I think we've all... We've discussed yeah, this. Okay, so no, that's fine. Let's just clarify the wording. So it's... You, you, the detail of the wording we can sort out, but the, the um, gist of it is that we, you would like... Your proposal is that we have installation by... 1st of September 2022, right? And, you're, uh, and Councillor Cohn is happy to second that. Would you like to indicate by a show of hands, members, whether you support that proposal from Councillor How uh, Howell? So that's one, two, three, four. Okay. And if you would prefer to stick with the later date, Sorry, I should have said that at the beginning, but if you prefer to stick to the later date of 2023. Sorry, we're in the middle of a vote, Councillor Wilson. Just, I personally will accept the view of the officers and I will vote for 2023. That's one, one, two, three, four, five. Is that acceptable? That is... Uh did you want to take the names? Uh, no, uh, no. I wouldn't. Well, it doesn't have to be a recorded vote. But I was just going to say the lead cabinet member also requested to speak on. Yes, the he did. He did. Yes, yes, absolutely. But this, right? Uh, Councillor Milnes, would you like to say what you wanted to now? <laughs> it's rather too late because you voted on this now, and I think. Um, I really understand uh, the committee's impatience to get on with this, uh, and it's one I share. I, I've got to say that um, having seen uh, Rachel in operation for the last six months, uh, uh, delaying things is not her style. Um, in fact, hanging on to her coattails as she gets uh, ad issues addressed um, is the more, more an issue. So I'm more than comfortable that we will make a... a progress with this as soon as we can i'm happy to work with the uh, the committee uh on on doing that um and i think if we've got a deadline of march 2023 uh, that does give us some scope to get the large number of installations covered i think the practical issues of actually installing this equipment in 800 uh, uh, vehicles is, is the, the biggest impediment to getting it done speedily. And we don't want to get to a situation uh, where some people have uh, got a reasonable excuse, let's put it that way, to not have installed the equipment. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Mills. And Councillor Bhattacharya, we've taken the vote now, but did you want to say what you wanted Thank to you. say? Thank you. I have a very, yeah, I have a very quick solution rather than, I mean, I mean the proposal. Why cannot we have a have a systematic systematic professional approach? We have. It's kind of low, no. It's a kind of like twenty five percent completion of work in six months, and then the fifty percent completion of the work. Like that means the twenty five percent and twenty five percent vehicles are done by this month, and then fifty percent vehicles are done by this month, and seventy five percent vehicles are done. Otherwise, a five years of delays is too damaging concept even for the press, public, community, it's not everyone. Five. Sorry, so Councillor Dr. Dr. Bhattacharya, it's not five years delay. We're, we're talking about a delaying from this date, 20, 31st of March, yes, 2021. Yes, absolutely, I do understand that, but that's why I'm saying... Until 2023. Yeah, so nothing has been done so far, and in terms of, in the, in the names of COVID and something more. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm just proposing or asking to the, uh, I'm, 
I'm asking to counsel, to officer and to you, why cannot we have some kind of a... Uh, uh, I'm sure, Councillor Bhattacharya, excuse me for interrupting, that is exactly the sort of thing that we will be discussing in the workshop so that we can work out how we can best implement this and make sure that we do it before uh, 31st of March 2023. And I very much welcome your input to that when we're workshopping it. Because my intention, as I said before, is that we will do this before You are this very date. welcome. Again, I'm interrupting. You are very welcome. But the showing, uh, showing, in the, uh, showing in the workshop of the five years of the total delay in the 2023, it does not give on we, us We are where we are, okay. Councillor Bhattacharya. Thank you. I think we'll call hall. We have agreed by vote uh, that we will implement this no later than the 31st of March 2023 and we will make every effort through our workshop to ensure that the stages are gone through to ensure that we A, have a decent specification for the equipment that we want to install, that we want operators to install, and that we give them time to install them in a timely fashion. Councillor Hunt. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just would uh, like to suggest that the, by the time the workshop happens, we should have identified yes. an actual supplier, an actual piece of equipment, and no any gaps with the specification. We were hoping to have the workshop for the other aspects of the that are on this agenda uh, sometime around uh, the third week in October. Now, I'm not sure that's going to be that's going to be whether it would be possible to identify a specification in that time. So I don't think it would be fair to tie officers to that. I absolutely understand the spirit of this. And my intention has always been that we do introduce this as quickly as we can. And I think at the workshop, we need to, we can go through the steps of how to make sure we do this as soon as possible. We need to support our officers in this uh, to make sure that we achieve this deadline of everybody having it installed by 31st of March, 2023. Thank you. Okay, so that's the second item. Uh, so the proposal for that one is that we um, introduce CCTV by 31st of March 2023. The final item is, perhaps thankfully, uh, mandatory, <laughs> so we don't get a say in it, uh, but we're being courteously advised of it. This is the right to works evidence, um, which is item 10 on the appendix A, page 11 in our agenda papers, um, where this is simply a change to the reference material being given in support of an application uh, to, to show evidence of a right to work. Um, the only thing that I found slightly confusing was that um, the narrative in the report uh, refers to the policy referring to an EU passport being sufficient evidence. Um, but my understanding, when I searched through the policy, it doesn't refer to an EU passport anyway. It refers to, um, through a web link to the gov.uk website. And I just wanted to check whether I was misunderstanding that. Ms Jackson, could you perhaps clarify on that point? Well, we can't hear you, Ms. Jackson. Thank Apologies, I, I, I must remember to unmute myself. It's not a common thing I tend to do. Um, with the EU passport, you say that there has been reference to that. It, Apologies, it could well have been within the, the handbook, but I say it was referenced within either the handbook and or the policy, referencing to the EU passport being sufficient evidence. However, of course, this has changed. And obviously, we have lots of identity requirements when somebody is applying for their DBS check and this process, but this is another form of identity checking is proved to work. So apologies if it might well, it should have been referenced to being within the, the, um, the driver's handbook. Okay. It was referenced within our documentation. Right. -o. So thank you very much. Um, so that's something that we don't get to say on. That's a government requirement. So uh, I'm hoping that we'll all agree with that. Is that OK? Agree. Did you say? Yeah. OK. So thank you very much indeed. Yeah, sure. Just before, um, so in principle, the 
these are the three things that we've been discussing. Councillor Chairman, Hall. just for convenience, would it be easier if we also did number nine? That's also mandatory, and we can just get it done and move on then for the future. Um, would that I be of use? asked uh, Ms Jackson to identify the things which had to be done now. This is to do with tax compliance, Ms Jackson. Absolutely, Chair. Um, absolutely, if, if Councillor Howard, it's a good point. I was just trying to keep, because obviously what was absolutely essentially pressing now, because we will have another committee in October, but obviously you know, the Chair and Committee are happy today to agree the imposition of number nine, as and when we need to have it done, um, then it obviously helps me completely. So yes. I'm all for, if members will agree the amendment to the policy, I'll be very supportive of that today. Agreed. Okay. I, I certainly would be happy that we agreed item nine on page 10 of our papers. Do members agree? Would you just like to show hands? Okay, good. Okay, so that's four items that sure. we've agreed. And uh, are you happy with that? Um, so thank you very much, members, and thank you for your concerned um, contr contributions to that. Councillor Whelan. I don't think we actually voted on item six. I think when we did that one, we said that we would leave it to the end and take I, them all I, together. Fair point, fair point. Um, so, could I just take your indication that you are happy with the item, the item six? Yes, agreed? agreed. Okay, unanimously. Okay, is there anything else we've missed out? <laughs> okay. So the remainder of the items will be brought back to a subsequent committee following a workshop to consider our views on it. Thank you very much, members. I'd also, um, for the record, I would like it to be noted uh, to thank uh, Paul Clare of Panther Taxis for um, putting such uh, a useful and informative response to the consideration. Councillor Hunt. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to slip this in now that, as I mentioned to you before the meeting, I will have to unfortunately leave just before four. So I thought I'd mention that now rather than interrupt the discussion. Thank you very much. Let's hope we can sort this one out very straightforwardly. Um, so, uh, Ms. Jackson, would you like to... So, that, so item five on our agenda is the Gambling Act 2005 Review of Statement of Licensing Policy. And it sort of starts on page 27. And... The recommendation is, it's recommended that the Licensing Committee recommend to Council the adoption of the Statement of Licensing Policy under the Gambling Act 2005 for a period of up to three years from the 31st of January 2022. And the draft policy is at Appendix A. Um, the two details that have been identified are the removal of a date at section seven. And this for us with an agenda is on page five of the policy, which is page 35 of our agenda um, under the heading enforcement and inspection. And the sentence reads, this licensing authority will operate to the South Cairns District Council corporate enforcement and inspection policy, which is considered consistent with the Gambling Commission guidance and the Regulators Compliance Code, full stop. Uh, the final element is um, a, large, a longer paragraph replacement under planning, which refers to the Gambling Commission guidance to licensing authorities. Um, Ms. Jackson, would you like to speak to us about this? Thank you, Chairman. It is purely, as you've actually uh, detailed in the introduction, it is the, the Gambling Commission had guidance relating to planning insofar as an operation, for example, an amusement arcade, a bingo hall, must be ready, basically, in terms of planning to operate. That was how the crux of it, you know, 2005 or whatever the legislation came through. But basically, the guidance has changed. So obviously, our policy now reflects the, the law changes, which in effect are the building doesn't have to be up and ready and operational, albeit for needing a license. So in, in a crux, in a very layman's terms, that is a kind of the effect of the change. But it is purely to reflect, Chair, uh, the, the Gambling Commission regulations and guidance. Thank you very much. And, and the other change, of course, is the review date, which is on the first page. Uh, yes. referring to three-yearly review in 2022. 
Does anybody want to raise any issues about this? No, I can't. Sorry, did you want? Issue with the Sorry, Councillor Dr. Bhattacharya. I just have an issue with the. Uh, I could not see anywhere in the specific uh, specific age is mentioned. In the entire page, page what? number uh, page number thirty one to forty one. Page number thirty six in the paragraph is mentioned the third line. Uh, it is mentioned the uh, mentioned about the protection of the children, but in the entire enter notes and the statement i could not find any specific age for age for the gambling note age is 12 years 14 years 16, 16 years or 18 years no no arithmetic number of the specific age is not mentioned any anywhere for this uh, for this gambling business um i have a feeling that comes under other documentation councillor uh, Ms. Jackson, could you advise us on that? Of, of course, Jack. Basically, there's different age limits within what is constitutes a child, but it's all specified within the Gambling Act itself. Yeah. So the actual Gap Act of 2005, and obviously this policy is not to replicate what is within the legislation, it's just to support how we will deal with applications. So in general terms, obviously, an adult gaming centre, for example, counsellor, obviously no admission by those under the age of 18, and protection of young people, is 16 17 year olds as well that would include in there but we don't have it here which is why we haven't laid the point so for example about um family gaming centers where a child could go and you say a push penny machine or a low prize uh, where you receive tokens for example as a prize at at a at a fun fair in a pier for example so that kind of thing so but basically 18 is the crux of adult gaming centers admission to if we had any here any adult, what they call adult gaming centres, which is just a term for an amusement arcade where we've got jackpot machines or obviously um, bookmakers and this kind of thing, like the William Hills, for example. And of course, 18 year old, you must be 18 to play a fruit machine in a pub. And um, bearing in mind, pubs and clubs are always licensed here under the Gambling Act, obviously for sorry, amusement arcades, because we do um, PTAs and stuff for the lotteries. But in terms of the Gambling Act and amusement arcade machines, they're only relating to our about 30 clubs and pubs, which have, have amusement, uh, amusement machines in there or quiz machines, which can only be played by people of, of the age of 18. Mm -hmm. But that is within the, the legislation, Chair. And, and indeed, Ms Jackson, we do have reference to it in item six, uh, betting premises on the bottom of page 39, where it refers in brackets, it is an offence for those under 18 to bet. So it does refer to it obliquely, if you like, uh, because it refers to it under betting premises. And indeed, elsewhere, um, under section one, the paragraph at the bottom of page, our page 38, the bottom, page eight of the policy, says only adults are admitted to the area where these machines are located, and that is recognized to be the age of 18. So I think, uh, whilst I hear what you say, um, Councillor Dr. Bhattacharya, this policy is not permitted to duplicate that which is in the Gambling Act. Uh, I have seen that under 18 thing, but I would really prefer if my if my children are if my children are going to a gambling place or anything, page number 33, when in the part one, where there is a complete statement for the licensing objectives. Why not a couple of times mentioning the um, uh, mentioning the age for the age for the children, children of 16 years, 18 years, a couple of just mentioning about that age, is actually makes a good proper statement. It's if I, the requirement I in relation you. to children, we can easily give a little bit of number there, which makes things much clearer and stronger. I would remind you that. Ms Jackson has pointed out we may not repeat what is in the Gambling Act. We mustn't duplicate legislation. Sorry, Councillor Hull, did you say? Councillor Hull. Uh, Chairman, may I make a suggestion that for clarity's sakes, we define the age of a child up to what age and the, the age of an adult up to what age? Where are you suggesting we would I'm do that? I'm just saying we make it at the, at the, maybe in the introduction into the actual what is a child and what is an adult as a purpose or when we're referring to people in this report. Ms Jackson, 
would there be any objection to us adding that into the introduction? Absolutely not, Chair. There's no problem with that whatsoever. I can get the definition and put that in there, which will reaffirm a child in this purpose means anyone under the age of 18 years old. That would old. be helpful. Thank you very much, Ms Jackson. So we could, so with that, um, we can work out where the best place is to put that. And we can put that definition into the introduction of the policy. Thank you, Councillor Bhattacharya. And thank you, Councillor Howell, for suggesting that alternative. Thank you. With that amendment, so with those three, well, there are actually four amendments then on page one, the date, page two, the introduction, or somewhere around there, page five, the, um, which is paragraph seven, the enforcement and inspection, removal of the date, and the matter to do with planning. Are we all in agreement with those amendments? Can we take that by show of hands, please, members? That's unanimous. Thank you very much, members. Uh, and we've still got Councillor Steve Hunt with us, so thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So, um, with that, thank you very much, and thank you, members, for your patience earlier on today when we had difficulties with the uh, IT. And uh, can I ask for the live stream to end? I call the meeting to a halt. Thank you, or to an end. <laughs>